Good morning. Well, Bella and I are here again. And I was thinking about this time. What should I tell y'all? And I remembered when I was on the evangelistic field. Now, the evangelistic field is when number one and I, we traveled from church to church and held meetings, which was called revival. You revive the church people. People get saved. They accept the Lord Jesus as their Savior. And that's what we did. We traveled on love offering. Whatever a church would give us, we would make it. And the Lord took care of us all that time. Well, a few years ago, and it has been a while now, because number one, Buddy has been gone since 1994. And seven years before he passed away, we was up in Pennsylvania holding a meeting in a lovely church there. And we was getting ready to pull out the next morning. And Buddy woke up about 9 30, 10 o'clock, and he was screaming with pain down in his side. He said, I am hurting so bad, I cannot stand it. I cannot stand it. You must take me to the hospital and take me now. And he says, honey, I'm not able to drive. So I said, okay, get in the truck. So he managed to get in the truck, get his pants on. And I got dressed and we got in the truck and we started driving because we didn't know where a hospital was. How do you find a hospital when you're way up in Pennsylvania somewhere and you don't know where you're at? So what we was doing we was looking for signs along the road because along the expressways, ever so often they'll say, hospital, next right. Well, we saw one of those signs. So we turned off and went to the hospital and he couldn't hardly get out of the truck. He said, I, I can't walk. He says, I can't. So I ran in and, and I said, my husband's in the truck and he's seriously ill and he's in awful pain and he cannot walk. So they rushed out there with a wheelchair and got him in it and brought him in and took him directly to the emergency room. Well, we didn't have any insurance, so we didn't know what we was going to do, but we have to trust the Lord, right? We don't know. So he, the doctors finally got there and they started examining him and they said he's in very bad shape with gallstones and we are going to have to remove them now. I never heard tell of such, but they had to do something and they had to do it quick because he was suffering so bad. So they did surgery. By then it was almost morning time anyway, and they called a surgeon in to do it. And the surgeon met with me after the surgery and he was out of it and he had some gallstones with him to show me, had them in a little can. And there was like three of them. And honey, they were as big, they were that big, almost that big, that big. I mean, big as a hickory nut. I never saw such. They said, these are the worst gallstones we've ever seen. And they're in his liver and they were trying to get through the gland. And that's why he was in such awful pain. He said, but they're out now. We had to dig them out of his liver, and the gallstones out, out of his gallbladder, his liver, somehow or other. I'm not a doctor, I don't know. But he's, they said, he's gonna be all right. And we got it. He said there was no anything else, no cancer or anything like that, but just gallstones, real bad. So the next morning, he woke up and he he just couldn't eat anything. So they had him on, you know, IVs and stuff. So they kept him like that for about three days. And then after three days, they said, we have a problem. I said, what is it? They said his intestines, there is no noise inside his stomach. And unless it starts making noise, his stomach's not working. Things have not kicked back in. And we got to get his, we got to get those noises back in his stomach. 
and gas moving. You have to hear it. And they would listen all the time. And there wasn't any. And there wasn't any. And he was still intravenous. He could not eat till his stomach started working again. So they said. So I called my home folks, my sister in uh, Indiana, and told her that Buddy was in very serious condition and that it looked really bad because unless they can hit, get his stomach to working again, he can't make it. It has to work again. And we were praying like crazy, but it, the answer was not there. So she came up and joined me and he still wasn't good. He would be awake, but he couldn't eat or do anything like that. They just kept him alive with the intravenous. And so we just waited. And then one day, we, we was there probably eight to 10 days. I, walk, I was walking down the hallway, but he was still in serious condition. His stomach was not working like it was supposed to. You could hear noises if your stomach starts working again. And this doctor who I'd never seen before, and believe you me, I was acquainted with all the nurses and all the doctors. And this doctor stopped me and he said, are you that uh, minister's wife that's in such bad trouble? I said, yes, I am. He said, well, I want to tell you something. He's going to be fine. And I want you to know I'm a believer too. And you don't have to worry. He's going to be all right. I said, oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. God bless you. What is your name? And he told me a name. And it was a Jewish name, which I don't remember. But I said, I'll ask the nurses who he is, you know, because I had not seen him before. So when I asked the nurses about him, they said, we don't have any such doctor with that name here. So Buddy was conscious and I went in and told him that I had met this doctor in the hallway and the doctor said he was going to be fine. I said, honey, the nurses say they don't know who he is. And I told him the name. They said they'd never heard tell of him. I said, honey, do you think maybe he was like the Bible says, you are visited by angels unawares? Because he said you're going to be fine. So I believe it was an angel. He said, well, we don't know who it could have been if it wasn't because the nurses says there's no such doctor by that name. And you know what? Buddy, stomach started working that day. Me and my sister Phyllis was there with him when they said, we hear rumblings in his stomach. We can now give him some jello and some Kool-Aid water or something. And so they proceeded to start feeding him lightly and he got well. And I still, to this day, believe I was visited by an angel unawares because the Bible says that can happen. I ought to look it up and tell you where it is, but I didn't do it. But this is where my scripture comes in. Be anxious for nothing but by, pray for what you want. It's all right to pray. You know, people say, I heard a man say the other day, well, I never asked God for nothing. Well, you better be asking him because how are we going to get in touch if we don't pray, people? So I pray often, quite a bit. Here comes Bella. She wants up here. So I want you to know, Buddy got well, and I pulled that 45-foot fifth wheel for the first time because I had to bring it on down to the hospital and park it and wait on him till he got well. And I didn't really know how to do that. But you know, the Lord enables you <laughs> as time goes on. So my sister went on back home and he got well. And so they presented us with the bill. Man, it was astronomical. And I said, look, could we make a payment plan because we don't have insurance? They said, you sure can. There's Miss Bella. So we made a payment plan and we paid on it for a few years. And then before it was paid off, 
we got a letter from the hospital because I have a main address here in Indiana because we built us a little apartment in the back of our house where we could be when we had days off. I got a letter from that hospital and they said, we are forgiving the rest of the bill. Consider it paid. That really happened. And we did consider it paid and we said, thank you, Jesus. God was good to us. And Buddy lived another seven years after that. He passed away at 63 with cancer of the esophagus and the stomach, which was a terrible death. They fed him through a stomach tube the last six months, but he had had a dream that God was going to call him home, and he knew that God was going to call him home. And you know, there's a place in the Bible that God is happy with the death of the saints. That's not exactly the way it is said, but I'm paraphrasing. But he rejoices, and I he, he calls them home sometimes. He really likes them. And so... When you're a Christian and you get saved and you accept the Lord Jesus as your Savior, by God, you are considered one of the saints. That's the way I look at it. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But that's the way I think it is. You are a saint to God and you are a good Christian. And if you serve him and love him and live for him and trust in him, so we trusted in the Lord but you still have trials and tribulations. But the Lord delivers them from them all. And sometimes how he delivers them is you go to heaven forever and ever. And a few years later, at 63, Buddy joined the master in heaven. And that's where he's at. And there's a lot of songs about join them in heaven. And I used to go around singing this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. And a lot of my treasures are already up there. My mama, my daddy, my grandmas and grandpas, and my dear buddy. And my number two husband was a good Christian. He's there too. There's no marriage in heaven. The Bible does say that, but it'll be wonderful. So I'm looking forward to the day that comes. You know, Jesus could come any time. And my scripture is, be anxious for nothing, but in thanksgiving, let your request be known <coughs> <coughs> to God. That's been a kind of hard story to tell y'all, but I wanted to tell you. Oh, that was, <coughs> excuse me, where's my coffee? <coughs> to the rescue. <coughs> there, that's better. So walk that walk where Jesus would be pleased with you. This was a tough one, but I want you to know God is still doing miracles. And that's a miracle that I felt like I needed to share with some of y'all. God bless you. Have a great day. Walk that walk where Jesus would be pleased with you.